You're listening to episode 30 of the Decorate Like a Design Boss podcast. And today I'm talking with my new friend, Sabrina. We're going to be talking about and revealing some ways that will change your perspective and outlook on organization. Welcome to Decorate Like a Design Boss, a podcast for design lovers who want to create beautiful spaces in their very own homes. My name is Kimberly Grigg, and I'm a professional interior designer who teaches design lovers like yourselves how to decorate. And when I say decorate, I mean decorate like a design boss. If you're ready to create a space that your family loves and your neighbors can't stop raving about, well, buckle up, honey, because it's time to design. So before I bring Sabrina on, let me tell you a little something about this gal. First of all, she is so savvy and her brand is so chic. You are going to love her. This is going to be an organizational game changer. Here is what she has to say about organization. She says, organization is so much more than a clean house. When our drawers are organized, it feels like our lives are organized. Transforming our spaces through better organization allows us to focus on the things that matter. So many of us struggle to get and stay organized. This is where SALT by Sabrina comes in. Salt by Sabrina was created during the worldwide pandemic out of a desire to find peace in the chaos of life through better organization. Today, I'll be chatting with Sabrina and talking about her story and how innovative custom products are going to change the way that you and I organize. I can't wait. Welcome, Sabrina. So glad to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure. You're welcome. Now tell me where are our listeners, where are you located? I think you're, you're, you're in a whole nother time zone. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I'm on the West coast. I'm in Utah. So I guess Midwest and just South of Salt Lake city. Ah, are y'all back up and running now with COVID? Are you still kind of shut down or how's that working out there? Yeah, Utah was one of those states that didn't shut down as much as some of the other states. So we've always been a little bit open, but everything's pretty much back to normal at this point, which feels really fantastic. Yes. And you know, Myrtle, Myrtle Beach, we're in a tourist town and we kind of had the same thing. No one stopped hardly. And it wasn't necessarily a great thing in the beginning because none of us knew what was going to happen. But as it kind of began to unfurl, it just sort of became the norm to not mask and people got vaccinations right away, that sort of thing. And I think it's probably because we're a tourist destination. I'm not quite sure, but I've been in California a lot lately because my daughter's out there and I'm shocked at how every everywhere you go is a mask and you have to show your vaccine card and all that stuff. I mean, it's and otherwise you're not going in. So it's real challenging, I think. So it's interesting how different states have different approaches. It is because our neighboring state, North Carolina, is still very much shut down. So which is affecting our shipping. And um, and and I, when we get into this, I want to know how a COVID is affecting your shipping, too. But anyway, we'll jump to that. First, you just got to tell me, how on earth did you get started in the organizational business? So if you asked anybody who knows me at all, probably the first thing they would tell you about me is how organized I am. And they would even say, go look in her drawers. (laughs) It's for real. Like she's really that organized. I really have a philosophy that everything should be as beautiful inside as it is outside. And I grew up in a house where my mom had five young kids and my dad traveled quite a bit. So she had to run a pretty tight ship to keep everything going while he was gone. And so we just kind of had this philosophy of organization from a very young age. And I remember on the weekends, my friends would always have to clean their room before they could hang out on Saturday. Right. Always like, 
well, my room's already clean. I just don't <laughs> that's because you're you had a space for everything. That's so yeah. amazing. That's I amazing. long for that. <laughs> and I, I have that side of my brain. Like for clients, I'm really good about organizing them and organizing my jobs to get them installed for clients. But for myself, I let that whole other side go crazy. That's one of the reasons I'm so excited to dive into this with you because I'm going to take charge of this once and for all. I really, really am. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I love it. No, we're gonna we're gonna get into all that today. We're gonna work. We're gonna work me out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna be a work in progress. We'll actually set a challenge and see how I do. I'll have you back on, and you can you can check my progress. I love so it. We'll I will be. Up. I would probably be mortified if you looked in my drawers, especially my makeup drawers. Okay. But (laughs) seriously, it's a universal struggle because every house I go to and everybody I talk to, they're like, you cannot look in these drawers. You cannot take pictures of them, but it's people have these beautiful homes and everybody struggles inside the drawer. So it's just, you know, we close it, we tuck it away. We try not to think about it. So, yes. And when I looked at your website and some of your beautiful photography, You know, what I'm going to say to the listeners is her system, which we're getting into, is so pretty. It's not just that everything's organized. It's organized in a beautiful way. And I think that that is part of the uniqueness of your brand. You're not just like everyone else. You Was that part of the goal? Yeah. I. You know, it's interesting because I found that when you took a space... And you kind of took everything out, you emptied it, you could reimagine it. And I'm sure you find this in design when you can start with that fresh, clean slate. But when you put beautiful things into a space, you're motivated to keep it clean because it's hard to put junk back into something that really is beautiful. Right. So that was kind of part of the idea was creating something that helped motivate people because we all struggled to kind of maintain things. Yes. When you put a beautiful organizer in a drawer, you want to put things that are useful inside of it. You don't want to put that junk back. So it just kind of helps in that process. So let's tell the listeners, like, what is this product? So they can really start wrapping their brain around that we're doing beautiful organization. Tell us how this product works and some of the features and why it's so unique. Yeah, I'd love to. So I'm sure everybody that's listening at some point in their life has bought a drawer organizer, but the problem is they never fit our drawers. So we buy these organizers and we have all these great intentions of how we're going to stay organized. And the problem is it doesn't fit. So it slides around and stuff gets lost underneath and they're opaque. So I can't see what's behind it. Um, And because it doesn't fit, there's stuff jammed on the sides and it just becomes this issue. So I wanted to create an organizer that actually fit your drawer. So I knew it had to be custom because as I got into this, no drawer is the same size. Mm. And we have so much variation even in the same house. And so we needed something that was custom. And I wanted something that was crystal clear so that if I had dividers within that drawer organizer, I could see through it. So I could see exactly what was in my drawer. So nothing got lost. I wasn't buying something again because I didn't know I actually had it. And just that clean aesthetic where it's not one more thing competing in your drawer. It's just, it cleans everything up and your things just get to exist in their own spaces. And it's Mm. especially a game changer in a deep drawer. There is no other company out there that makes a deep drawer organizer. So you think about those bathroom drawers that are six, eight inches deep. You end up just throwing stuff inside of it. Sure. Right. Because what else do you do? And and it also, because you now can utilize the vertical space. Right. So you either use the bottom third or it becomes kind of a dumping ground. Mm-hmm. But now we can use every inch of space. So I can take a single compartment and put an entire bag of cotton balls in that compartment. Right. So I'm so much more efficient with my space. I can get rid of ugly packaging. It just looks beautiful. It's custom Mm. fit. So it's just kind of a brand new approach to organization. Instead of one size fits all, it's let's talk about what works for you. Let's get a layout. I love this. So good. So good. 
You know, right now, I'm sure you do, that the trend in the design world, especially in kitchens, is to use drawers, lots more drawers than cabinet space. And I've wondered, you know, how are people going to live with this? How are people going to live with these drawers in a meaningful way, in an organized way? And with your system, it makes it all make sense. And I, so I love this idea very much and not just in your kitchen, but your bathrooms. Like I have deep drawers in my own bathroom and they're just crammed full of stuff versus like, what if I had the system in, then I could maximize my space for all the bits and pieces and parts, because you've got something that divides everything and it can be as deep as my drawers. That kind of what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, this, this theory of anything clear allows us to see what we have because when you think about bins, you know, you buy these bins to contain things. But for me, if I put a bin in my closet, I have no idea what's in it. And it just essentially becomes lost. It's not really a great storage solution. So being able to see what we have is huge. And then being able to utilize all of our space because people move because they don't have enough storage (laughs) <laughs> but really, if we can give them efficient use of their storage, they will find that they feel like they have a brand new home. I love it. I love it. So I don't know about my listeners, but recently, before I discovered you, I went out and I saw these acrylic pieces and that I at Home Goods, and I purchased loads of them. And I thought this is gonna solve everything. It's going to change my world and I'm going to now be organized. And so I tried, however, inevitably they weren't the right size compartments. They didn't fit my drawers. So they slid all over the place only to end up thinking this was a waste of a weekend. And this was like literally two days before I discovered you. (laughs) <laughs> and I was so joyful. All the ones that I had not ripped the price tags off of, I took back because oh, <laughs> I would so rather have something fit my space. And just so the listener knows, you can customize the size of these compartments with, by template, I think is how you do it. Is that right? Yes. So there's different layouts. I think we have 35 different templates and they're kind of designed for everything. And a lot of them work in multiple spaces. So when you go on the website, you can see, okay, the Susan drawer organizer is a great kitchen silverware organizer, but then you can also see it working in an office space with markers and pencils and things like that. So a lot of these work in multiple spaces, but the great thing about them is they scale to fit your drawer. Mm -hmm. And when you're on the website, when you put your measurements in, it's going to actually show you what size those compartments will be. So you'll be able to see exactly how it's going to work in your drawer. You'll be able to make sure that ruler or that mixing spoon just works perfectly. So it's very user-friendly. I love this. So where does one start the organization process? Let's just start at the start. (laughs) What What do you say to someone who says, you know, I keep wanting to get around to it, but I just haven't gotten around to it. Where's the best place to actually get the ball rolling? The kitchen is always the ideal space to start because it's the space we use the most and is often the most frustrating. Mm. And, you know, I I was installing my mom's house uh, Mm. a couple of weeks ago and we did all of her drawers in her kitchen. And she commented to me after she said, you know, I love to bake, but I haven't baked in several years and I didn't know why. And what she realized is it was stressful for her every time she went to bake and she was searching for those measuring cups and those spoons Uh, and everything was cluttered. And she'd, you know, when you open the drawer, but you got to kind of shove stuff down to get it open. And she just was like, it was taking away the joy of baking. Ever since she's had her organizers installed, she's baking again. And I just love that it has this emotional factor to it, but it really brings joy. And so people get hung up on, oh man, it's so hard to get organized. Where do I get started? But what they don't realize is the payoff. Mm -hmm. You're going to see so many wonderful side effects from getting organized. It's going to empower you in all kinds of things in your life. I can't wait because I really do... I often just put it off and I get 
I kind of get in my own head about it's the weekend. I've worked all week. I don't want to all that whiny stuff. <laughs> Only to really realize that when I do organize a space or so in my home, I feel so fresh and I feel invigorated. I have a really close friend who just built a, a house and she's downsizing and there is no clutter, no clutter allowed. Like she is on it and she just has made that decision. And it's a bit of a, I guess it's a bit of a mindset, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. Yes. And I think, you know, I have kind of three core philosophies with organization. And the first one is keep it simple. If it's too complicated, you're not going to do it. The second thing is if you can do it fast, do it now. So this is like, don't leave the dishes in the sink. Go ahead and rinse them and just throw them in the dishwasher. Because those are the little things that add up over the course of the day. If you're like throwing in that load of laundry, doing those dishes, um, putting those shoes away, at the end of the day, you realize you, there's not a mess to deal with. Right. So it's just staying on top of those little tasks. And then the third thing that is so critical is just get rid of anything you don't need. Anything you don't use, I promise it's holding you back. You don't realize how much energy it takes to maintain your stuff to keep it organized. And, you know, we, we had talked about the, you had asked me about the garage and Mm -hmm. I think the garage and the basement are like the black holes of organization. For sure. (laughs) For sure. I I feel so vulnerable right now, Sabrina. (laughs) I feel like, oh God, she's looking at my soul. And, And what is so funny is like on the outside and, and not that I'm inauthentic. I I don't even have, I don't know how to be that anymore, but, (laughs) but I really do strive, I strive so hard for clients, but I am vulnerable because I don't keep up with it as well as I should for myself. Now, of course, after today, I am pledging (laughs) to accept the challenge and walk the talk and actually get this done once and for all. But what do you say to someone like me who I might spend the energy to get organized, but then how do I stay organized? What do I do? So this is just going to come down to some processes. And really, it's these three things. So you got to keep it simple. You know, people start way too big. They're like, okay, I'm going to organize my whole kitchen. Don't do that. Start with just a single drawer. Go to your junk drawer, the drawer that's just out of control all the time that every time you open it, it brings you stress. Let's start there. So I'm going to have to choose which junk drawer. Yeah, I know. That's so funny. Everybody's like, okay, well, I got to narrow my junk drawers down. (laughs) All right. So I'm going to choose one and I'm going to master it. And then what you're going to find is that it's going to make you feel differently. And it's going to motivate you to start with that next drawer and then that next cabinet. And, but you've got to start again, simple, but then it's that the maintenance is the doing it fast, doing it now. Don't love that. Just, you know, like make your bed. Don't let that be something that nags at you during the day and getting rid of the junk. Because if we get rid of the junk, we're not looking for places to shove place things. So we're not going to the garage and the basement as our overflow. Because right. we're able to store things in the place they're used. Right. So we become more efficient. So the bathroom stuff stays in the bathroom. We don't have stuff in the garage. I mean, pretty much by the time it gets to the garage, it's junk. We're not going to use it. We're not going to go right. dig it out. So if you're putting something in the garage, you probably should just get rid of it. <laughs> Unless for it's a garage sure. Item. For sure. I mean, I use it at, in fact, the friend that I was telling you about that just downsized, she doesn't have a garage. She did a carport. Because she never wanted to invite junk into her house again. I like, love that. Is that beautiful or what? It's so beautiful. Yeah. I, I just, I, again, I, I just look at that whole scenario and I swoon and I am a layered designer. So I have a lot of things and, and I've had six kids. So I raised six kids in this house and then you throw their clutter on top of the ordinary clutter, and it becomes a clutter festival. But I have nooks and crannies I would just cram and hide, especially the garage. I finally am able to park my car in the garage. But <laughs> but here's the, the, the crux. When you are in that space, 
it feels overwhelming. What do you say to someone who feels like, okay, there's so much to do. I'm just overwhelmed. That's where you got to kind of break it down into these smaller pieces. So don't even start with a room, start with a drawer. You also want to have just some regular practices that you do. And again, keeping it simple. So for my kids, I've got four kids. My life is busy. There's a lot. And there are times when my house is straight up chaos. (laughs) Um, I'm glad to hear that. (laughs) Oh, in fact, this week we had photo shoots for all of our holiday content. And so we had product everywhere and... My kids were tripping over it. They were chasing each other around the house and screaming. And my whole team was just looking at me and I was like, well, it's really good. We're talking about organization when my entire life is chaos. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I know you can just whip it back into shape. And because I think you probably have the foundation laid from the beginning. And that's the thing is these key things. So with my kids in the morning, they have four things they have to do. And it's really simple. One of them is they have to turn off their bedroom lights because I hate wasting electricity, (laughs) but that is so easy. And they feel like they've accomplished something because they flipped off that light switch. The second thing is making their bed. I always believe when you start the day accomplishing something, it just changes the way you function in that day. And then they have to take their laundry to the laundry room and put their whites in the white basket and their darks in the dark basket. And they have to open their blinds because I always love natural light. It just makes it feel so happy. And it's easy. You're so good. (laughs) Oh, no, it just, it's like, it's setting up my kids for success because they feel like that is totally achievable. They can do it in about five minutes and then they've started their day off differently. So these little practices that you can do that do it fast, do it now, having little systems in place, it just makes all the difference in the long run. And with clutter, I always recommend go through every room in your house at least once a year, because you're going to find that there is stuff that just, I mean, it it happens. We just accumulate things coming in and we got to think inflows and outflows. So as things are coming in, where do they land? And as right. things go out, you know, we've got to make sure that we're not taking in more than we're putting out. Right. So I'm going to go, when we get off of today, I'm going to go right on my bathroom mirror and lipstick. Do it fast. Do it now. <laughs> it's going to change. You're and you're going to drive yourself reminder. a little <laughs> I drive myself crazy because sometimes I can't let go of things. I'm like, oh, I can do this in under a minute. I just need to do it now. Right. But it's okay to also give yourself the grace that some days... Right. Okay to watch you know, Netflix. <laughs> I do do that in my business world. I am do it now, do it fast because, or do it fast, do it now because I I have so much that I have to accomplish on a daily basis. I can't just write it on the list and do it later. I need to just exactly. go ahead and knock it out. And I always I kind of organize my day that way. The things that I can feel a sense of accomplishment with, I do those first. All that little stuff that clutters up my page of what I'm going to do today, I get it done. So, and then I feel so good because I see all these check marks that I've actually done something. So I think to your point, if I apply that in my home, it's kind of the same sense of feeling like you're on top of it, feeling like you've got a grip, feeling like you're accomplishing things, which is really a game changer. That's a mindset shift in my world. Oh yeah. And I love what you said about starting with the easiest things to accomplish. That's why I think start with a drawer, start with something so simple that it feels like it's achievable. And then, like you said, it just builds and you start to feel this empowerment. You know, I I say a lot when our drawers are organized, it feels like our lives are organized. Yes. Really. There really is a correlation. I mean, I think about, you know, I, my husband was out of town and so I had to get all four kids ready for school and I, I was thinking, okay, I got to be really on top of it this morning. And so I got up extra early and, you know, made sure I had breakfast laid out and all their backpacks and everything ready to go. Right. And the morning went so smoothly <laughs> and my husband called me and he was like, was it okay? Like, I'm so sorry. I had to leave you and deal with all the kids. And I was like, actually it went so well. And right. I think sometimes we let ourselves, like, I almost like rely on my husband too much where he's so helpful Right. But then when I'm actually on top of it, it's like, wow, I left it for the day feeling so empowered, like yes. I can handle anything. So we don't realize that that little extra effort, the payoff is so exponential. Sure. 
And I think as women, like I know that anything that I can do to champion accomplishments for women and that feeling of empowerment, it's not just good for, I don't just do it for others, but for my own soul. I feel so good about life when I have a moment of empowerment. And a moment of empowerment can come from something so small that someone else looking in would say, you know, that's not that big of a deal, but it was. And it something just even small can make you feel so good about your day. And once you start your day in that kind of motion, well, then like begats like, and the next thing you know, the whole day went super well. And I think it's because you come from that place of empowerment. Yeah, absolutely. Even when things aren't going well, when you have these things under control at home, it feels like I can handle that. Like when those unexpected things happen. And it's funny because my husband will always laugh. If I'm organizing the pantry, he's like, Ooh, you had a stressful day. (laughs) (laughs) That's how I go. I love that. That's actually the one time that when my husband says this, if I'm cleaning closets or the pantry, he's like, who are you mad with? (laughs) <laughs> but that's a great, like it's just like energy and I've got to get it out and it's yes. a good way to do that so tell me this when it comes to kids you know I find kids things a little more on the difficult side to deal with you know we we have the obvious toy type situation but the thing that I've struggled with a lot is I have all back when we used to print photos of our children before everything was on our phones. Yes. No, I have these beautiful, wonderful photos of my children and I can't bear to not like, what do I do with them? How do I organize those? Where do they go? And how do they not end up just being a jumbled mess? This is a tricky one because I think there's sort of this idea of keepsakes because there are things that are worth keeping because they have that sentimental value. I actually worked with an influencer and she had these beautiful minted cards and they were, she had done a collaboration with them and um, they were just in a drawer. And I was like, we got to put these out. These are so beautiful. You know, it's such a great collaboration that you did. And so we got the, so she actually ordered the custom storage caddies and we had them so that the pictures face out and they're clear so that she could have those on her shelves in her office and see that beautiful work that she had done. And so I think things like that, like photos, Mm -hmm. rather than putting it in a box that then again becomes lost once it's in a closet, let's find a way to display those and make those functional. You know, if you're holding on to something like, and I'm not super sentimental, like if I have a letterman's jacket, I'm kind of like, I don't need it. It's just going to sit in a box. I'll just take the memory. But something like a photograph, even photo albums, let's get that in a drawer in the family room where that is easily accessible and you can pull that out and enjoy it or on a shelf. We want to have those things a little bit more accessible. Is yes. key. Yeah. So, okay. Well, that kind of, that makes sense to me. And I think that, you know, mixing that probably with some of the digital things that you can do with your photos now to have them preserved in, you know, little small a small, I guess, flash drive or something could help too. And then maybe take some more special ones. So what are some other things that you see that are awkward that people struggle with in the organizational world? A lot of people have cabinets or spaces that are really odd sizes. I worked with a cake baker who had a six inch by 20 inch cabinet, just a super awkward space. It's so narrow. There's not anything that you can find to fit that space. You know, under the sink is a huge issue because you've got pipes and and things like that that you're working around. So I think those are some of the more difficult spaces that people are struggling to find solutions for. And it's also difficult because, I mean, when you think of under the sink, there's a lot of vertical space, but typically you're not able to use that. And this is where the design for the, the custom storage caddies came in for me was I actually made them stackable and they have compartments in them. Because I realized that bins don't have compartments. And so again, you're just sort of dumping clutter into a bin and then putting it in a cabinet and I have no idea what's in there. So being able to 
see what's in there, stack it. It just is a game changer in organization. Yes. Yes. Because I think sinks under sinks has to be that like, what do you do? And then if you open it, all these things start falling out. (laughs) And, and so to your point though, by using your system, then the sponges have a place and the, the dish soap has a place and everything just looks so tidy, which I love. And you can get everything out of the packaging. You know, the Ziploc, I want to call Ziploc and say, why did you design the box to perfectly catch on everybody's drawer? So (laughs) true. I don't know why. It's crazy. And so with the compartments in the organizers, you can get those bags out of the box and into a compartment, and then it's no longer going to catch on that drawer. So those kind of things are so nice for functionality. Sure, I love that. So what what happens when you go to Costco or or one of the big stores and you buy in bulk? Do you recommend that you put all the bulk together or do you have backup storage like a stock room? How does that work? I'm a big fan of Costco cuz I've got four kids, two <laughs> fingers, <laughs> they eat a lot of food. I always think if there's any way possible, you want to store your back stock with your front stock because okay. it just it's difficult to manage and it's a lot of work to manage having a storage and then having something that you use because mm-hmm. then we got to go to two different locations. Sure. So I'm always looking for ways to be efficient and simplify because then I'm more likely to do it. So if I have, you know, four bottles of Tylenol in one place, then I can see when the stock is running low and when I need to refill. So if I'm buying that big order from Costco, I'm going to try to put that all together in the same place, but maybe I'll just stack it behind each other or have a couple containers that I fill. And then as those deplete, then I'll replenish. Oh, Sabrina, this is so good. This is <laughs> so good because I suffer from, and I'm sure a lot of our listeners do too, but like, my husband will go out and buy 14 more bottles of Tylenol because (laughs) he didn't know that I had the Tylenol in the other room and that the one that we go to is empty and it's on the shelf in the pantry. Like just that is so brilliant because I can't think, I can't even imagine how much money people waste on not knowing their backstock. That is the biggest issue. And it's funny because every house I go into has one item that they have so much of and have no (laughs) idea. Um, I did one house and they had, I think, 20 pair of scissors in the kitchen. I was like, oh gosh, (laughs) you don't need 20 pairs. No. Let's get you down to like three. And you probably don't need 400 rolls of toilet paper. That's what I stock up on. I oh, think I don't know what that. is wrong with me, but I have so much toilet and I'm always buying toilet paper. And <laughs> I think so. we're all going to buy toilet paper till the day we die after the pandemic right? and the fear of not having toilet right, paper. Right. The, all the pandemic about took me out over the toilet paper. I mean, I was stockpiling and putting it in the trunk of my car and blah, blah. <laughs> It was so funny, but but yeah, um, this is going to help so much to just store things in a single location and just give yourself enough room that you can have that back stock. Yeah. But if you can have it in a single place, everybody's going to know where that is. We have a battery drawer. And now every time we're going to refill that remote, we just know here's the battery drawer and all the batteries are there. I love this. So tell me about spices. That sometimes gets out of control for people too. So how do you organize the spices? And I think you have a tool for this as well. Yeah, it's so funny because it started with the drawer. And then as I got into these other spaces, I realized there wasn't great solutions there either. So I created a, a series of custom spice racks. We have four different versions and they'll fit everything from that 28 ounce can to, you know, your small spices. We've used them in medicine cabinets. So you can see all your medicines, bathrooms. They're great with nail polish and and hair products, but they scale to fit your cabinet. So then again, you can utilize all of that space. Even in your pantry, a lot of times you'll have a shelf, but you're only using this much space. So having that step function, now we can use that vertical space and maximize our storage. And the other thing we designed was a line of, so we were actually releasing this for in December, which I'm super excited about. We have a spice jar set and they are designed to fit two of your average spices. So if you were to buy like two things of, you know, garlic powder, 
it would fit both of those in a single jar. Because a lot of times, I think the amount that you get in a single one, you go through it really quickly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, And then I end up buying a bunch and then they're all shoved in a cupboard and I can't really see Mm -hmm. them. And so I wanted something that again, was this beautiful aesthetic that looked nice on our custom spice rack and that could allow me to store a greater amount of spices in a smaller space. I love that. I really do. I love to cook and man, I'm constantly standing on my head looking for the cumin. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and actually, I think that's probably what I'm going to bite off first is what to do with those. Another thing that I hear clients say, and I struggle with this myself, is I'm an artist and a lot of my clients do crafty kinds of things. Those are hard to store. Like there's a lot of little bitty pieces. What do you say to someone who has is a crafter or an artist? How, what's the best way for them to, to organize their crafts? So this, we actually just installed an artist studio um, oh, wow. a couple of weeks ago. She's one of my dear friends. She's an artist and she has four children that are young. And so they all use the same space and it was chaotic. They had drawers full to the brim of just everything you could imagine. Oh. And her item that she had so many of was pencils. <laughs> I think she had, she just kept buying new packs of pencils. And I was like, Amy, do you have any idea how many pencils I'm you have? Guilty. In <laughs> I'm guilty. Um, But this is where the drawer organizers really shine. So we were able, she had a special drawer for all of her paints and paintbrushes. And it was a really deep drawer. It was, I want to say about 10 inches tall. So we put a tall drawer organizer in that had multiple compartments. So she could actually store her brushes upright and then just grab them and then have her paints all there. And everything was compartmentalized. So it was so easy when she was done to rinse those brushes and just pop them right back into that compartment. And same with, you know, any of the crafting supplies, we have this one layout that I think has uh, 64 slots. And so for like buttons for sewing or different kinds of threads, even in the garage, if you want to keep all of your like nails and screws and things like that. But again, when you can separate things, it just makes all the difference in maintaining it. It's when it's all jumbled together, we get to the point where we're like, well, I just want to chuck it all and buy something new because it's sure. more. Well, and I, I imagine, I know for me, sometimes I don't even want to go in my art studio because I don't want to get started because I really am having a struggle trying to find what I'm looking for and what I need to create what I want to create. I know I'd feel, I always feel so good when I, every so often I just stop and try to reorganize it all. And I feel so good to start from a clean palette and feeling like that everything is in its place so that I can create without having to frustrate myself mentally because I can't find the supplies I'm looking for. So I love this. I'm going to be checking out various things I can do for my art supplies because that's that's a real I'm a bit of a hoarder in that regard and then I feel like when I leave my art studio they multiply somehow <laughs> oh I know it's crazy how much <laughs> that it's like doing. wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> well and you forget what you have so you know when I was organizing this design studio, her cute little five-year-old daughter walks in and she's like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know we had this stuff. And yeah. so being able to find it and organize it, but you know, you talk about joy. This is something that, you know, when people are talking about how to get motivated to organize, it's understanding what the payoff is going to be yes. because the way you talk about how you feel creating in an organized space, it's different. You want to be in that space. You want to be then doing these activities. And we just don't realize how much it holds us back. Agreed. And I never really thought about that until this chat with you. I never really thought about it's holding me back. I just felt like it was something I didn't want to tackle. (laughs) Yeah. It's like that nagging task that you're like, oh man, there's so many other more important things. But what you don't realize is when you get organized, everything else becomes easier. So good. So good. So one last area that I want to touch on is I call it the garage collector because (laughs) it's really like the garbage collector. And uh, 
everything just somehow ends up in my garage. And I know people have this issue. So like what's one, two, and three to get that under control? So the biggest thing is first, you got to assess your space. You got to walk in. And one thing I talk about is you always want to give every space a job. So you want to say to that kitchen drawer that's right next to your stove, you're going to hold all my kitchen utensils. So that's, and then it's easier to remember to put things away because you know what the job of that drawer or cabinet is. And it's the same thing in the garage. You need to look at your garage and say, what do I need this to do for me? I've I've got to put the bikes in the garage. We probably need the tools, you know, maybe the garbage bags. Like there's things that make sense in the garage. Once we start getting clothes and toys and things like that out there, we have to say, okay, why did I put it in the garage? And what is the purpose? So this is, this doesn't fit the garage's purpose. So now this has just become junk that I'm storing. And now this is holding me back. I need to get rid of it. So, yeah, so that's just so good. <laughs> so you kind of have to think fresh. And one tip that I love to share is always start with a clean slate, whether it's your closet, the garage or the basement, take everything out. And it's so much easier to get rid of things when you've already taken it out because you've emotionally disconnected with it. I was cleaning out my closet a couple of weeks ago and I, I have the sweater I've not worn in three years. And I don't know why I've had such a hard time getting rid of this stupid sweater, (laughs) but it's like it. So I made myself take everything out. And it was like, as soon as I took it out and I saw the space and I saw how beautiful and clean it looked, I was like, okay, I wouldn't buy that again. So I'm not going to put it back in my closet. I'm really going to put back the things that, you know, I think it's uh, Marie Kondo that says like the things that bring you joy. So things that brought me joy were the things and that I used are the things that I brought back. So in your garage space, Sometimes it's like, just take it out, clean out the space and then see what makes sense to put back. Love that. I'm going to tackle that. I really am looking forward to walking in my garage and feeling this sense of relief versus this anxiety of like, oh my gosh, there's so much stuff. Like, why do I have all this? Yeah. And and when you try to tackle that, when everything's still in the garage, it feels impossible. But if we take everything out and we go, oh my gosh, look at this incredible space I have. It's so much easier to only put back what is used. Love it. So the name of your business is Salt by Sabrina. And why Salt? Tell me about that. I was trying to think of a name that was a little bit catchy and that had really kind of defined what the brand was all about. And Salt is clean, natural, (laughs) and enhances everything. And I love that because really that is what these products are all about. They're clean. They're actually natural, no chemicals in them. Oh, So they're safe for your home, which is fantastic. And they enhance everything you add them to. Like you spoke of before, they're beautiful. I mean, they sparkle in your drawers. My dad, when he saw them in the kitchen said, I didn't really think these would be like this, but he said, they're kind of a fashion statement. Oh, I love it. That's so cute. (laughs) So cute. So well, I'm sure that your parents are so proud of you. I'm proud of you because oh. I think of all the businesses that I've encountered and I'm always looking for women in business. I just, I love it. It's almost like a sport for me to <laughs> see what women do with their businesses. I just think it's very clever. And I was just enamored with this whole idea. I think it is brilliant. I applaud you. It's necessary. And girl, you're just like making our world a better place. Like it just is so interesting. And I do want you to tell the listener how easy it is for your systems to work. Because at first I thought, oh, I don't know. And then like you just make it so easy. So tell them how, like, how they can do this. Okay. And also, thank you so much. Those are such kind (laughs) words. And I love, Women in business, I feel like we all just love and support each other. Oh, so so, much. It's so powerful. So I love that. I feel like it's my NFL sport. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I love that. It is so easy. One of the things that I wanted, you know, I wanted to really help people be successful in their organization process. So I wanted to break it down so it was as easy as possible. So a lot of times you think custom products, you're like, ooh, that's a little bit scary. 
Well, we have videos for everything. We have videos on how to measure, how to install, kind of like our just the brand and sort of what it's all about. They're all on our website and our social channels, and they make it super easy. But basically, all you're going to do is in your drawer, you're going to measure the length, the width, and the height of your drawer. And on our website, we have a drop down menu where you choose half inch increments. So if your drawer is, let's say, 19 and three quarters, you just round down to 19 and a half. And the reason we do that is just so it's very easy to install. Sure. And you have um, the screws on your drawer hardware that you'll want to make sure that clears. So if you're exactly on the inch or half inch, you want to just like round down to the next half inch increment. And that's it. You just pick your measurements, you pick a layout you order it, we custom make it just for you and deliver it to your front porch. And how, what's your turnaround time these days with all the shipping and the COVID and all that stuff? Well, we were initially six weeks. We're about 10 right now with just- That's not bad. Which for a custom product is actually unheard of. Right. It's it's amazing and so, good for you. Good for you. you. We've, we've built in a lot of efficiencies and we're actually looking um, at some new things to implement for 2022 where we're looking to um, decrease that time to about four to six weeks. Girl, you just have it going on. I'm so proud of you. This is amazing for you to be able to accomplish this and to really step up to the challenges of what our world is giving us right now and actually come up with ways that you can work around all of the shipping problems and the uh, driver's problems and all that stuff. I think it's just, you know, sometimes it's so easy to just get overwhelmed by what the world is handing us, but you've just take it, you're taking it in stride and like it's a challenge and we'll just get on with it. And I love that. So <laughs> yay you. <laughs> oh, you're you're so kind. Well, I'm definitely the kind of personality that if I can't find a drawer organizer I like, I make my own. But and there you go. And you know what? I <laughs> that is such a beautiful thing. So before I get into my signature questions, which are my fun questions, I love that. Um, tell me how everybody can find you. So you can find us on our website at saltbysabrina.com and you can find us on any of our social channels at just salt by Sabrina. And there was one other thing I wanted to just share with you. One of my reasons for creating this company was I wanted to have an impact in the nonprofit space. Oh, that's right. Oh, tell me. Yes. So for every organizer that we sell, we donate a dollar to America's Kids Belong, which is an organization dedicated to placing children in foster care in permanent loving homes. And they're an incredible organization. Go check out their Instagram and website and see what they do. But we love supporting this, making sure that while we're finding a place for everything in our homes, we're also finding a place for everyone. Oh, Sabrina, you know, I knew there was a reason I love you. And I'm going to tell you a little story. I adopted as a single woman, I adopted a little eight-year-old years and years ago. She's now 36 years old. She was in the foster care system. And I literally did not know what I was doing. And I'm always that girl, like, if I don't know about something, it doesn't stop me from pursuing it. And I literally met, ran into a woman who did therapeutic foster care, and she would place these kids that were most likely not going back into their homes of origin. So she said to me, that's what I do. Do you want a kid? Like joking. And I said, yes, I'll take one. Nine days later, I had a child. <laughs> and And it has been a beautiful love story. She was my first. I was not supposed to be able to have children. I ended up with another adopted child out of the foster care system once my husband and I got married. And then I got pregnant with our two youngest. So we kind of have this blended situation. But I have to say, my foster care experience not only changed my life, it changed my entire perspective on the world. And it was one of the most joyful, meaningful things I've ever done. And people say, oh, it was so great. You saved her life, whatever. It it saved mine. It made my life so enriched. And 
So in any event, I champion your organization. I I just anything that we can do for these kids that that don't have a beautiful home is so so important. So yay and good for you and I'm so glad you mentioned that cuz I think it's important for our listeners to know that you are giving back and you're making a big difference. Well, I mean nothing compared to what you just spoke to. <laughs> I, really, this is what makes a difference is we all need to belong to someone. For and when sure. we have that support system, it changes the dynamic in so many areas from welfare to the penal system to homelessness. When we put these kids in homes where they have loving families, it of changes course. them and it changes us. So right. it really just, it, it can change the entire social dynamic of our country. It can. And these two kids that we adopted, you know, we've forgotten who's adopted and who's not now or who came from what. Like, it's just, we're all just a blend and a big family. But, you know, their lives, it was the first time that someone picked them. So it changed their life, their esteem and everything because they had never, they've been that kid standing on the sidelines that never got chosen. And to be chosen for no other reason than to be chosen can change a person, but to experience it from a mother's perspective, what a difference it made in my life. Like, you know, it just was different and, and so much more enriched. And so in any event, that's a whole other episode. (laughs) Yeah. We'll have to discuss more in depth. Yes. 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 So now I'm just going to ask you my fun little question. So who's your favorite design hero and why? I love Joanna Gaines. She just has this ability to make everything feel welcoming. You know, she's Mm -hmm. so approachable and her target line just is, it's beautiful in the details, but it feels just very accessible. I just love her whole mentality. I love her too. And I think that to, for sure, to your point too, her things feel organized. Yes. They feel really clean and very intentional. Like it feels like it's cohesive and works together well. Yes. So next question, what would the hashtag on your tombstone be? (laughs) I think my husband would say the cheerful neurotic. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. I love that question. I love to hear what people, how people deal with it and what they say about it. It's just fun. So what is the one design element that you use that makes a huge difference in your own home? I think having, I I kind of, my mantra I would say is simple, but inviting. So I love a beautiful decor, but I like those really great textures and tones that feel like you can just come in and curl up with a good book, you Mm. know? And Mm. so I try not to overdo, like not to have too many things but still have it just feel so inviting because I always want people to walk in my door and just feel like they're family. Love that. So what's your one tip that you leave for our listeners on how to be their own design boss? I think it's really, it's hustle. It's, you know, it's like you talk about these shipping crises and, and trust me, there have been tears. Um, <laughs> <meltdowns>. <laughs> I feel you girl <laughs> in the closet, in the corner with the lights off, but it's who's going to problem solve. So if you're willing to solve those problems and you're willing to keep at it, every great story. I love reading biographies. I've read Steve mm-hmm. Jobs. I've read Phil Knight's. Um, Shoe Dogs is amazing. But you're willing to solve the problems and you're willing to hustle. And if you'll do that, you're going to comp- you're going to change the world yes. because it's just you're not going to give up. Yes. Yes. I love that. Well, Sabrina, I don't even want to let you go. I feel like you're my new BFF. Oh, we <laughs> I can talk to, to you for the rest of the night, <laughs> but I'm going to let you go because I'm sure you have plenty to do. <laughs> and I just want to encourage all of the listeners, you got to check this gal out. She has just got it going on. She is the epitome of the hustle. She's the epitome of organization and her website, her Instagram feed, it's all really beautiful. So spend a few minutes just scouring it and definitely check out her containers and her organizational system. 
you won't be sorry. And I'm going to accept this challenge myself. I am going to bite the organizational bullet with Sabrina once and for all. I'm going to stay organized. I can't wait to order my containers. And I am going to spend the time and I'm going to feel so empowered that I'm also going to be an organizational boss. How about that? (laughs) I love it. (laughs) So I will see you next time. And as I like to say, don't wait. Today is a great day to decorate. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to Decorate Like a Design Boss. If you want more info on how to decorate your space like a pro, visit KimberlyGriggDesigns.com. See you next week.